The Prentice also Heating and Air Coaches Corner, fueled by Donut Country and McDonald's Murfreesboro on FM 101.9 and AM 1450 Murfreesboro, FM 100.5 Smyrna, and streaming at WGNSSports.com. As we roll into the second hour of the Coaches Show on WGNS Murfreesboro Smyrna, this segment brought to you by Ideas Tees. We'll be happy to help you fulfill all of your imprinted apparel, embroidery, and advertising specialty needs. Find out more at ideastees.com. The head coach of the Oakland Patriots, Kevin Creasy, joins us this morning. And, uh, Coach, you ran into a little uh, homecoming, MTSU homecoming traffic, I see. (laughs) Yes, I am literally half a mile from the station, but I am blocked off, and it's bumper to bumper. I don't know if I'm about to be in a parade or what, but I could (laughs) probably walk to the station faster than i can drive okay <laughs> yeah well uh, you know just if you got a blue hat put it on and start waving i guess i don't know <laughs> yeah I, I just found out the problem they've blocked off uh college street i'm just finding this out oh wow well yeah we'll uh, make it in this morning i understand that those things happen but i appreciate you being willing to uh come on with us every saturday morning to talk about oakland patriot football and uh boy you had uh, your hands full last night with the uh, blackman blaze yeah, you know, uh, I guess people think I just make this stuff up when I say it's going to be four quarters, and, you know, I don't know that a lot of our players believe that, but, uh, you know, just watching those guys on film, uh, Coach Christ, he's got a physical bunch. And they were ready to play, and uh, like I said, they were probably uh, the deserving team to win. I thought they, uh, you know, for 47 minutes, you know, pretty much controlled the game, and uh, you know, had it locked up. Uh, you know, we made one play there at the end to, to block uh, the game-winning field goal. And, uh, you know, we know all about uh, their kicker, Borden Bozen. He's a heck of a player. And his dad used to coach all of our Mr. Football finalists that were up for uh, kicker of the year. And uh, so if we hadn't have blocked it, it would have definitely went through. And, uh, you know, we would have probably got what we deserved. We we got beat most of the game and probably didn't deserve to win the game but a lot of that is credit to Blackman and uh what they did I thought they played a heck of a game and uh you know almost uh almost got the win you know there there were some very uncharacteristic things that happened over the the course of the game you know uh an almost safety a safety I mean just uh, and, and boy the penalties that you had last night were it wasn't the number it was just when they happened and what it did to the to the next play yeah yeah it 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 made uh life tough on our offense uh but you know we put ourselves in that position you know we made mistakes and uh you know put ourselves behind uh the chains a lot you know there was a lot of second and 20s and third and 15s uh just uh stuff that you know we just uh uh, have a hard time overcoming, you know, and and likewise, uh, you know, made some mistakes, uh, you know, not handling snaps, and uh, you know, just a lot of a lot of different uh, plays could have changed that game one way or another, and there were big plays made too, you know. That we talk about the mistakes, but man, there were some huge plays uh, made by our team. There were some huge plays made by Blackman. Uh, I thought, you know, you couldn't really tell who was going to win right there in the fourth quarter. And that's the way uh, these rivalry games are supposed to be. That's the way region games are supposed to be. It comes down to the fourth quarter. And, you know, a lot of our guys, uh, you know, weren't, you know, just hadn't been in that situation. And uh, uh, they didn't know any better that they were supposed to probably lose. And they they were used to seeing some, uh, you know, guys win their whole career, you know, here at Oakland. And, and they just kind of accepted the fact that, we were going to win the game, which I was in there in doubt a lot of times because, uh, like I said, Blackman outplayed us most of the game. They outcoached us most of the game. And uh, you look at a guy like Ethan Carson, uh, definitely the best dude on last night. And play- so uh, I lost you there a little bit, Coach, but um, you were talking about uh, Ethan. I mean, there, there were just – interesting parts of that game it was less than two minutes uh to go in the third before you actually got there on this on the scoreboard so you know yeah. um you 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 had a battle whether your kids knew it or not yeah like i said uh you know maybe i sing the same on the same sheet of music about how 
we could get beat every week. I don't know, but I truly believe that. And, uh, you know, you play a quality opponent like Flatman. I, I was just saying, Ethan Carson, my goodness, that dude was the best dude on the field last night. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you throw in Trey McGaffey and, uh, you know, their big physical D line. I mean, they gave us all what we wanted. Uh, you look at Whiteman, I think they easily could be 5-0. and oh. You know, their record doesn't reflect what they really should be. And, uh, you know, as far as us, we easily could be, you know, 2-3, and 3-2, three, three and two, something like that. So, uh, give our guys credit, you know. Uh, sure. They didn't give up, you know. They didn't throw in the towel. And, you know, they kept fighting to the end. That's kind of what we did at Texas. And, uh, you know, it paid off again this week. But uh, at the same time, you keep playing around with these close games long enough, you're going to come up on a short, you know, very easily could see uh, an opponent like Blackman again. Oakland coach Kevin Creasy joining us here this morning. You, you could tell as the game went further along and and further along that it it, it it the whole mood of the of the stadium changed. I mean, things became very tense, and and when you're in games like that, um, you know, when you finally scored and it it, it was twelve to seven, still behind there in the in the third quarter, you knew that you had a battle in the fourth quarter. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And let's think about it. You know, we got our guys together at halftime and it was like, you know, we get to open and kick off and, you know, it's three to nothing. It's, a, you know, it's one of those low scoring games, but, you know, we got to be patient enough just to go down and score. And then, you know, second, I think it was the first play of the second half, we have a penalty. And then the second play of the second half, you know, uh, we don't handle a snap and, and we end up getting a safety. So it turns into a five nothing ball game. So, uh, yeah, just a crazy ball game. Yeah. Could have went either way. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we're glad to escape and get out of there with a win. And, uh, uh, like I said, it could have easily went the other way. Talk about the safe, uh, a safety in a game. To me, that is such a, a momentum swing when your defense can score and then your offense gets the ball right back. I mean, that's – that's really a a bit. It's rare, but when it happens, it, it can certainly, you know, change momentum in a hurry. Ah, uh, yeah, and, and like I said, we're we're hollering at the kickoff team, you know, and uh, we're looking and we've got nine guys out there, you know, and we're like, where's the other two guys? I, you know, just looking like they might not even know, you know, that we're going to kick off after safety. You know, that's something that we've addressed before, but obviously not enough. First kick after a safety, you know, from our own 20-yard line, we kick it out of bounds, so we get another five-yard penalty. And so now we're kicking off from the 15, and, and Blackman's in great field position to put our defense in terrible field position. Well, you know, you, you you did have to make some really spectacular football plays, and, you know, after turning the ball over, you, you get the ball back, and that's when you score and seem to be what kind of – was the the spark that that lit the flame for the uh, the Patriots last night? Maybe talk about that series. Yeah, you know uh, Chase Bandy made a heck of a catch. I thought Kyler did a good job of putting it on the money. You know, it was a big long, uh, might have been a third down conversion uh, that got us in good field position. Uh, you know, Dewan Morris uh, is begging to go in the game the whole game. You know, he's probably seventy percent. He's still got a high ankle sprain. Uh, but he practiced a little bit this week, so we put him in. And, you know, right from the get-go, he mishandles the snap. So, uh, you know, it was it was a lot of adversity. I thought at times our guys handled it well, and at times we didn't handle it well. So it's a good lesson uh, for all of us. Hopefully, hopefully we can get better from it. You know, hopefully we understand how easily it could have went the other way. But, uh, like I said, there were some tremendous plays on both mm-hmm. sides. I, I, I know that. We got down in, you know, third six or something like that. And, uh, we've probably been in the Wildcat 100 snaps over the last two years, and uh, it's been 100 out of 100 runs. And so we think we got a good play call, and the next thing you know, we throw it, and they tip it up in the air and pick it off. There were several tip balls that uh, were made on both sides of the field. You know, both defenses just played lights out, and both offenses – you know, did what they could to just try to put points on the board. I thought there's 
sophomore quarterback had a heck of a game. I thought had a lot of positions. I thought uh, they outplayed us and and uh, outcoached us. And uh, you know that's something we gotta we gotta go back to the drawing board and get some things uh, corrected. And then you know at the end of the game uh, we got to do a better job of being able to handle an emotional win, uh, just like you handle an emotional loss. I thought uh, we had two or three guys that showed poor character and selfish. Uh, went over there to try to, you know, showboat and, you know, kind of rub it in uh, Blackman's face, uh, you know, at their own own stadium. I thought uh, it was uh, pretty poor on our, our part. And of course, uh, you know, that bad reflection on me is very embarrassing. Uh, embarrassing for our whole school. You know, it's uh, one thing, it's real terrible to not know how to lose and, and really show out. But uh, when you don't know how to win, it just shows you, you obviously haven't been in that situation too many times, and uh, you, you know you got to understand that uh, these emotional games, you you sure don't want to uh, gravitate the situation and turn it into something even bigger. And uh, like I said, it could have got ugly last night with all the stuff uh, that happened after the game. I, I give credit to the administrators at, at Whiteman and of course the SROs that were there to kind of break up all the pushing and shoving going on and. Like I said, we got plenty of video to watch on that too, and uh, there'll be plenty of disciplinary actions on our part to take care of those guys and learn a tough lesson that, you know, sometimes uh, the best thing to do is get in that handshake line. And unfortunately, we had about 90 people in the handshake line, and we had two or three that didn't do what they were supposed to. But uh, like I said, we'll get that corrected. Pretty embarrassing on our part. Well, um, you know. Coach, you never you never know what's going through the mind of uh, 17, 18, 14, 13 you know, year old kid. So yeah. you know it, yeah. it's just uh, uh, and emotions run high in those rival games. So, but um, I know your leadership, you'll get things uh, where they need to be. I, I did want to mention uh, Kyrie Gaynor because he did uh, block the field goal last night, the potential game winning field goal for Blackman, and that's not the first time that that cat's done that this year. Yeah, Kyrie, you know, uh, right before the the block field goal, he probably makes a touchdown saving tackle. Yeah. So Kyrie's about 160 pounds soaking wet, and so he's out there. You know, they wouldn't even have to kick a field goal if Kyrie hadn't came off of man coverage and ended up making a, a you know, a touchdown saving tackle. And uh, then he comes off the edge and, uh, you know, blocks, blocks the field goal. So, you know, that's something that we work on, and, and Kyrie, you know, lays out, Every day, we work on it for like three minutes a day, and for three minutes he's laying out, stretching out, and uh, you know, not everybody would be willing to do that, but he realizes when he's got to do that. You know, obviously the game's on the line, and and so give credit to Kyrie for being made out of the right stuff, and not only doing it in the game, but practicing it so he can do it full speed in practice and turn it into full speed in the game. So, you know, definitely a, a game changing moment. 1 and 0 in region play. You're at home next week against uh, the the Rockville Rockets. What do you know about Rockville and uh, and the week that's to come here for you? Well, you know, I hadn't seen Rockville on film, but I do know that, you know, coach Guthrie is uh, you know, going to have his guys ready to play. Uh, at the end of the day, they know the region uh wins are important to get into the playoffs and they've got to have one and uh you know, to our guys, we got to convince them that, you know, last week was last week and this week is just as important as last week because region games are region games and they all count the same. So I uh, definitely need a good performance out of our guys. Kevin, we um, look forward to being at Ray Hughes Stadium next Friday night to, uh, to broadcast the Rockville Oakland game and certainly had a fun night last night and uh, congrats on the victory. All right, appreciate it. Yes, see, sir. See you next week. All right, that is Kevin Creasy. Uh, and you might if wave at him. He may be in the homecoming parade for MTSU. You never know. And uh, that is it for this segment of the Coaches Show. That is brought to you by Bowen's Body Shop. From dings and dents to full body work, trust Jeff and Kyle Bowen to do the job right on Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Craig's Tax Service. We perform tax preparation, individual tax returns, corporations, partnerships, and all your payroll bookings.